SolidFire delivers the industry's best automated HA story with the ability to self-heal from any drive, controller, or shelf-based hardware failure, and the software that enables that. This demonstration will go through each one of the conceptual items of SolidFire's automated HA, as well as go through a demonstration of what it looks like to rebuild from a shelf-based failure. On a traditional storage system, it runs a shared disk shelf HA scheme with dual controllers and typically shelves behind, possibly quad controllers depending upon the architecture. But the biggest challenge associated with any of these high availability type schemes is if were we to lose one of these controllers like this, then we have to rush into the data center to bring that second controller up because we run the risk that the second controller could go down and then we would have a data unavailability event. Or worse, were this shelf to go down, then we automatically have a data unavailability event, and then we need to rely upon four hour support or premium support to bring that up as quickly as possible. Whereas on SolidFire, we have what we call the shared nothing high availability scheme. And the idea is, is we have resiliency across in our case nodes, and that data redundancy is distributed across the entire system. Then from there, we take it one step further, and then we have a self-healing HA concept. And the reason why self-healing becomes so interesting is that over time, computers and the backend software end up rebuilding things at a much, much, much quicker rate than we ever possibly could between a four hour or a next business day support contract. So consider this. Let's talk about the hours to start a rebuild process. In a self-healing environment, the, the healing process occurs automatically, whereas on a four hour support or a next business day support, it either takes four hours or 24 plus hours for that rebuild process to start. The reason why this becomes so imperative is, is, is if you look at most modern SSD arrays, they re rebuild in a very short manner. So for example, let's take an hour rebuild process. As you can see here in the self-healing environment on a solid fire system, the rebuild will complete in roughly an hour. Whereas were we to even run on an all SSD system, it would take a minimum of five hours or even possibly 25 hours, largely because of that time to start the rebuild process on albeit a controller or a shelf based failure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up pulling the apparent of a shelf on solid fire. What I have right here is it's pinging the shelf on an active one on an active basis so we can figure out exactly when it's powered off. And then I'm gonna run a load to this system. Now we're starting that workload to the system. And you can see right here, currently there are no alerts on this cluster and currently there are no running tasks. And as an informational piece, we're currently running a four node cluster and with solid fire, as we grow that cluster out, this rebuild process gets better and better. So kind of think of this as being a low water mark for the time it takes for a rebuild process. Now that we've started off the traffic, let's pull a shelf. I'm gonna pull a shelf in the background and then we'll see it show up right here when we can no longer ping it. Now we can see pretty much immediately we can no longer ping that particular shelf. Um, by this request timeout right here. So we know that this shelf is down and we've pulled the power plug on it. And then we can see down here with the IO rate, of course there will be a performance impact. However, as we can see right here, there isn't any downtime associated with pulling out that full shelf on the system. And on the solid fire system, it will wait for five minutes prior to starting the rebuild process. The reason being is were during an upgrade or something of that nature, uh, there were to be a reboot on one of the individual nodes, then we want to make sure that that reboot completes prior to rebuilding all of the data on there. Now that that, that brief period has, has passed, you can see underneath the alerts that our nodes offline um, and various different other warning messages associated with us not, us not having that node in the respective copies of the data.
and now that the five minutes has passed, the rebuild process will start immediately. And we can see under the running tasks section right here, this will show the active progress on how quickly that rebuild process will occur. So in this particular instance, we had lost a full node. Um, under the summary report, we are right around 40 to 50% full on this four node cluster. Um, and we can see that that full rebuild process under load is gonna take us according to this chart right here, right around 10 minutes to complete. In the interest of time, I'm gonna fast forward. And now the rebuild process is nearing completion at 99% with only a few seconds remaining. And look at the elapsed time. It's taken a little bit over 10 minutes for this full node rebuild to complete. This would be the apparent of losing again a full shelf on a traditional base system. And now the entire rebuild process has been complete and performance has been restored, as we can see here on the lower left, back to the original performance levels. You can also see here the performance impact during that rebuild process was actually quite minimal, considering we went from a four node cluster and then we dropped that down to a three node. With the rebuild process, we only, we only were, were around a 40% decline, despite the fact we had at least a 20% decline in the overall amount of performance on the system. And here's why in a, in a typical environment, albeit service provider or enterprise, this becomes so critical, this ability to automate HA. So what I just showed in this example was we had started with a cluster, then we had pulled a node on that one cluster and the data had automatically redistributed itself and load balanced and self-healed without any manual intervention. Then from there, we could lose another node and continuing on and on and on down the process based upon the amount of capacity within the system. So then the biggest question that needs to be asked is, in your particular environment, do we need one node of redundancy, two nodes of redundancy, or possibly even three or four nodes of redundancy for environments that are very, very critical in nature? And the biggest reason for any type of self-healing HA is, well, if we're going to end up automating the back-end system through uses of various different things like APIs, for example, or if we're going to try to simplify management as much as possible so that a single administrator can manage as much data and free up as much time so that then they can go do the projects that in the end end up benefiting business, why shouldn't we be doing that on a high availability side? And only SolidFire can deliver that automated self-healing high availability. For more information, visit www.solidfire.com slash high availability, or I would highly recommend reading the white paper on the cost of storage high availability. Thanks for watching.